Okay, we're back with Trump Week. I'm Jay Fidel. Cynthia Sinclair, my left, Tim Apicella at her left. And uh, we're going to talk about an amazing, another amazing week. The title of the show is, It's Not an Inquiry. Ah, it's an impeachment. Where do we go from here? I'd like to comment on one thing, though. Mm. You know, this is somehow, it was, it was something we could have anticipated a long time ago. That we'd be, we talked about it a long time ago about as a possibility, and now it's happening. And it's, you know, it's so interesting that it seems like it's always been happening. It seems like this is a natural expression of this administration. And we're spending all our time on it. The country is involved in this contortion over impeachment. And, uh, you know, it's another thing that we can thank him for. Thank you for involving us all in this contortion, where the government is completely ineffectual. Um, and here we are, day after day, week after week. It almost feels like we've always been doing this for him. Anyway, okay, so we have impeachment going on. Precious little else, I'd say. Uh, and uh, uh, Tim uh, wakes up early in the morning and watches it. Uh, so uh, how are you feeling, Tim? Four o'clock in the morning, tired. <laughs> I'm beat. I was taking notes, and I realized I, I fell asleep as I was writing uh, watching the questioning, and I couldn't decipher what I wrote on my notes. So four o'clock is very early to get up on, and um, I'm tired. But you know, um, the last two days, I think, I think this has all been put together. Um, I think it's pretty obvious. And and where I see the Republicans just desperately clawing at, you know, a trying to get the whistleblower's name and identity, and you know, some of these uh, superficial things that really are not pertinent and germane to the argument of this impeachment inquiry. And the bottom line is, they look desperate. And uh, as, as though they try to argue as effectively as they can, it just doesn't come off well. Well, they have this moving target defense, you know. When one defense doesn't seem to be working, try another one. Correct. They keep on moving backward. Uh, but the question really is, do you think, I'll, I'll be asking this throughout the show, do you think the public is, is buying it? Um, you know, the advancing impeachment evidence. Uh, and is it buying what, um, um, what's his name, Jordan and Nunez have to say in their, in their self-serving questions? I, I think that'll come down to polling. And I don't think there's been recent polling on this. And, you know, um, I think it's going to shift and it's going to increase the argument for removal from office from a larger percentage of the population. And maybe not from the red states, maybe just more people waking up from the other states. Uh, so we may have a split right down the middle in this country. One never knows until well, we see the numbers. We do kind of already have a split, yeah. yeah. Uh, so what, what, if, if you had to write the articles now, you guys, and you know what I mean when I say articles, right? right? Articles of impeachment, yes. <laughs> what, would, what, what would the articles be? Well, obstruction, of course. Bribery, which is an impeachable offense even though they're trying to back away from, well, they didn't, they couldn't do quid pro quo, so now we're doing bribery and extortion when we really didn't have any of those things when in reality that's what quid pro quo is, is extortion and bribery. So, you know, I think that's pretty key. Abuse lying, of power. Abuse, abuse of, power. of power, lying to Congress, um, all of those. Yeah. All, and I think I wish anyway that they would put the Russia stuff in there. too. I'm afraid that they won't. But I think it's wrong for them not to. Mm. Well, it certainly affects our thinking, the Russia stuff, for mm -hmm. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I, the, there's a lot going on, but um, he said he was going to testify or he was considering testifying. How would that work? Any, any thoughts about the possibility of Trump testifying in front of this committee? It's in useless. Public? If it was in a written form, that's as, it, as useless as uh, paper in the garbage. It's not worth the paper it's written on. So if, unless he shows up in person, it's, it's useless testimony. Even would, if, if he's you in were, person. Uh, Adam Schiff, would you, would you take the paper? No. Because no. you can't cross-examine on it. That's correct. Oh. And there'll be lies and there's a whole yeah. fact check thing. It's a manifesto. Yeah. It's not a testimony. Exactly. He has lied too many times for us to believe anything that comes out of his mouth anyway. That's true. So what's the point? I don't. I don't think he should come. I think it would just oh, I think muddy he should, everything up. Oh, I think he should show up. Absolutely. Oh. Under oath? You betcha. But not, not in written testimony. No, it all raises this very interesting thing. It's a phenomenon that's happening, extraordinary. And 
You know, history will say whether it was a good idea or not to have a trial now. This is essentially a trial. Examination, cross-examination. Uh, Adam Schiff is acting like the judge, although actually I like to see a real federal judge there doing this kind of, you know, sort of put those bad questions to the side and not let them, uh, you know, hijack the hearing with it. Um, but um, this is a trial. It's what it's turned into. This is not your customary impeachment inquiry behind closed doors. It's a full tilt, full boogie trial. So if let's assume we go through this trial, the evidence as it is comes out, you know, and you don't have to push me very hard to vote to impeach him. Okay, now we have an impeachment resolution by, by the House, and it goes to the Senate. I asked you this question before. Then what? Another trial? The same trial, the same witnesses, the same evidence, the same questions. What, what happens? It's, but, it's an extraordinary situation. I think that's why they're doing it in the House, because they know when it gets to the Senate that Mitch McConnell is going to do nothing, and it's going to be a joke. And they're going to let the Republicans go crazy and hijack the whole thing. And they're not going to let the Democrats really even present anything anyway. So... I think that's why they're doing it the way they're doing and it's it, clever. so that we can get the evidence out there, because otherwise the evidence would never see the light of day. And who's the jury in this trial? The public, huh? Yeah, the, the yeah. voters. In this one, it's the public. So they've got to make their points. Mm -hmm. So, big question. Are they making their points? Uh, I know we've talked about, you know, how uh, Jordan and, um, and Nunez, they come around and make speeches and mm -hmm. remarks that I can't stand watching because it's so, it's so deceptive and misleading and I stupid. Um, but query, are they making their case? They are, absolutely. Well, you, what are the high points lately? Well, okay, if you looked at the Sondland testimony this morning, um, we, we, he has amended his testimony now three times. Um, he's evolving, he's an evolving witness. And the only reason he's evolving is because there's testimony from the other parties that's, that is forcing him to evolve. Now, in the good old days, they would have said, you perjured yourself, and that's the end of it. But Congress is allowing him to evolve as a witness, and that's what he's doing. So what did we get today? First off, he's confirmed that, yes, there is a quid pro quo. Again, you could call it bribery, you could call it extortion, but let's go back to Latin term. He's also acknowledged that, um, uh, that they, they were all together on this. We're all on the same page. There were no secrets. And that means the three amigos, okay? So what does that mean? Is that a conspiracy if you know what you're doing and you're asking for is something illegal and you're all on board, following the directions of the president, which he's acknowledged today, direct yes. acknowledgement that Donald Trump was directly communicating through uh, Rudy Giuliani his desires and wishes. So when you are all working together in tandem and it's something that's not legal, and it is not legal, um, isn't that a conspiracy as well? Isn't that another article of impeachment? Perhaps. Um, you know, the list goes on and on. You have credible witnesses on, on all the way around. Even the Republican witnesses aided to the fact that there was something amiss, even though those were the witnesses that the Republicans wanted to come to the table. Uh, Morrison, I think, comes to my mind specifically. Yeah, I, I, the Sondland is trying to avoid, uh, you know, uh, running against Trump, but he's not successful. I, I enjoy some of his um, answers. And actually, a more skilled litigator for the Democrats would do better uh, than Adam Schiff. Sorry. Um, but I presume, he says, what does that mean? Uh, yeah. He asked me a yes or no question. I presume. <coughs> well. Or I assume. What does that mean? It's like somebody briefed him on this. And, and I think that he's getting briefed right. as other pro-Trump type witnesses who want to protect Trump. They've got to be getting briefed by White House counsel. Yeah. Well, they are. And here's something I've never seen before, which is actually pretty smart. I don't know who briefed them on that, but when Sondland's saying, well, first off, um, if I had my notes and my, you know, I don't take notes, but if I had some records from the White House, which the White House won't give me, I, my memory would be a lot better. So he knows that's not coming, so he can place his uh, lapse of memory on, on papers he can't get out of the White House. But what he said was very interesting. He goes, I don't recall. But if so-and-so testified that's how it went, then I'll go with that. So he said that several times that's during ridiculous. his testimony is that, I don't recall, I don't remember at all, 
But if Morrison said that's how it happened, then I, I guess I won't dispute that. Uh, yeah. I so it's a very I, interesting way of, of, of getting around the testimony. And then when it comes to bringing out Morrison's testimony, he goes, well, I don't quite remember it that way. Okay, you said earlier you don't recall, you don't remember, but you, you'll go with the testimony of Morrison or, you know, all the other uh, um, witnesses. He's a weasel. Well, he's yes, doing he a very good job of it. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I mean, well, the question is whether he's persuading anybody. You know, the, 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 what comes out of this is sort of in a larger sense is that Trump has been obstructing justice all along. You know, refusing to respond to subpoena, telling all the people around him not to appear. That's obstruction, all of it. And I hope they nail him on one of those articles with obstruction, because the whole thing reeks of obstruction. As you said, conspiracy for obstruction. He's working 24 hours to obstruct this thing and, and everything he says and does. And in his own mind, you know, those comments he made about, what, Vindman and uh, Yovanovitch, um, that was intimidation. And it was uh, an attempt to uh, affect the witness. Yeah, tampering. Yes, tampering. tampering. Yeah. Um, in real which time. Which is also obstruction, you know. Yeah. I don't, and I hope the people, you know, in the red states will see that for what it is. It comes down to this. It's, it's like a lot of things that we experience in our society, whether it's mass shootings, um, blatant lying from the president, um, horrible policies that are being pulled off, you know, incarcerating kids at the border and the whole bit. Are we as a society becoming so desensitized that none of this really matters anymore? And that's my real concern. I'm glad you brought that up, mm -hmm. because Trump has done us the huge disservice of desensitizing yes. us. And uh, there are white supremacists out there that are um, getting stronger. Um, the country is being more divisive. Uh, we are losing our moral, uh, our, our moral suasion overseas. Um, you know, the United States is on a huge and visible decline, thanks to this man. You could say, well, some of these flaws are already, you know, coming, coming evident before he got in office. And maybe that's what led him to get in office. But no, he has exacerbated it. Uh, he, is the, uh, he is what's making it happen. And, and we, we ought to recognize yeah. that. And maybe that's why it was a breath of fresh air to see Vinman testify, particularly mm -hmm. you had mentioned you picked up a quote or two um, from Vinman about how he came to this country with his father, you know, escaping Russia as, in, as being persecuted as a family, being Jewish, and how they all dedicate themselves to the service of the United States. Yeah. The entire family members are all in the military serving their country. Yeah. Hey, can I read his quote right yeah, now? Yeah, please do. I love this quote because it was really powerful. And one of the things that really struck me, too, is that it's a very silent audience that's there. Yet when he finished this, they all applauded. Yeah. And I thought that it just like erupted in this spontaneous applause. Yeah. So he says, Dad, my sitting here today in the U.S. Capitol, in U.S. Capitol, talking to our elected officials is proof that you made the right decision 40 years ago to leave the Soviet Union. Do not worry. I will be fine for telling the truth. And I thought, you know. And then it was another piece about, you know, <laughs> if you were back in Russia and you did this, you know, talking about the government. Right. This way, be you'd be, yeah, and he said that. Yeah. Uh, well, but this is, he said, this is America. This is America, and it's the right, right thing. Right matters. It's the right, and right matters. And right matters. And I love that. So courage. there was this injection of, again of what we stand for as Americans. And it was refreshing to see that, you know, amidst all this you know, horrible lying and you know, trying mm -hmm. to uh, obfuscate the truth from the other, you know, from the Republicans. And it was, it was nice and refreshing to see what really matters and why are we there in the first place. Does the rule of law matter anymore? Does the Constitution continue to matter anymore to those in red states, blue states, or, you know, around the world? Who support him. Right. I thought Williams was a very powerful witness. Um, I thought she was she very, was. very eloquent, very succinct. Um, she really, and... And then they don't even know where she works. It was yeah. like, what? <laughs> he works for <clears throat> Mike Pence. Hello. Um, you know, the Russian advisor for Mike Pence. And so she basically blew out of the water that Mike Pence didn't know anything about this. <laughs> no one knows she, anybody. Yeah, I know. But I mean, she really blew that one right out of the water. They can't say that anymore. Well, you know, because he's been trying to claim, well, I didn't know any of that. 
Well, yeah. Well, can I know. can I just jump on that for a yeah, minute? Yeah, yeah, go. You know, in October, early October, Donald Trump talks about Sondland as um, a very good man and a great American. Thirty days later, eh, I, I don't know him very well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come on, don't know the man. Yeah. Right. Ooh. His famous last words. That's how it is with anybody that says anything bad about him or tries to come out with some sort of evidence against him. He's automatic. I don't know him. Never, never met him. I, I don't know where this is going. You, as you said, um, the, uh, the, the, the polls, the polls will tell us, but they haven't told us yet. No. And we're involved, we know we're involved in a, in a stark process that, that is high in the list of notable historical moments in the history of this country and becoming higher all the time. And really, this is a test for us, including a test for the people who voted for him. I don't know if there's an easy answer here. We may wind up in, in the creek over this, but uh, I, I may be talking I, points for an election. And, you know, yeah. I, I think we've all said a long time ago that it's unlikely the Senate is going to remove him from office. Yeah. However, if the salient points of, of, of this impeachment inquiry and the impeachment vote, um, if, these ma if these points can somehow survive the next 12 months and be on the minds of some Americans, at least the ones that vote, um, maybe that will have an impact on the election. Yeah, from your lips to God's ears. As so, long as we can keep him from cheating and manipulating the numbers so it doesn't matter what we say. Well, he's going to lie. That's the part, and but you know I he's going to lie. I think people are, you know, I talked to one Trumper this week, and he said, he said, yeah, I know that he is an a-hole. I know that. We all know that. Everybody agrees he's an a-hole, but he's still doing a good job, and I agree with what he's doing, and all this kind of substantive, but notice how he backed off when he said that. And I think that's part of a, of a movement, maybe, a movement among the Trumpers to back off. Okay, so at what point in our history with presidents did we make the quantum shift of not association the qualities of the individual to the office? When did that break happen? Was it Nixon? Was it Obama? Obama was a very ethical yeah. individual. <laughs> so when did, when did society make that break? Yeah. In the last three yeah. years. Yeah, now. Really, because yeah. to tolerate all these lies is unbelievable. And, and the, pre the press, to their credit, you know, they go after them on the lies the best they can. Um, but, but it's the people, ultimately, that have got to decide. And that's who we're playing to. And so it doesn't matter what happens in the Senate. It's where the people are listening. And I hope everybody gets up at 4 in the morning and listens. Um, now I'm going to be it. grumpy for the rest of the day, though, so I can't help it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I woke so, up at four or two. I'm not going to be grumpy. Come on, guys. No. So what's you the time what? frame going forward on uh, this? Is this well, going to finish? Well, well, of course it'll finish. But, I mean, eventually it's going to finish. The thing that I've been, that what well, you were just saying a, a minute ago, what, is the, what does the public think? What do they say? You know, I watch, I, I record all of them so I can watch all the different networks and so I can really see the different um, reactions to the substance of it. Um, and when I'm watching Fox, I'm absolutely floored that I see these people, and they watch the same thing I watched, they just showed it. And then they come out and they say the exact opposite of what we just watched. Yeah. And I think, how can people, I mean, how can the Republican Party or Fox News survive this whole thing? I can answer that. It, our politics is becoming like religion. So we filter everything from our preconceived ideas right. about this new religion called politics. Mm -hmm. And it's remember back in the 70s when you were in, uh, you were shown the picture, was it a, a French lady with a hat or was it an old lady oh, with a right. shawl? Right, right. And half the room said, it's, I see only an old lady with a shawl. And the other half said, oh, I see a young, right. young French lady with a hat on. Right. So, how we filter things is how we come to our final conclusions. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but, uh, you know, Fox News has management and stockholders. Fox News knows that it's fomenting lies. Mm -hmm. Fox News knows that it's not, you know, accurately reporting anything. And, and they are trying to play to those people who, who need to hear this, you know, uh, as a statement of support for their own perceptions. Um, and it was a movie about the, the guy who uh, created this process in Fox. Roger Ailes, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and it still continues. And there's still a whole bunch of commentators and newscasters on Fox News that lie on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And that's for money. That's for money because the management of that company 
um, believes that they'll make more, or they are making more money by lying. I, I find that extraordinary that anybody in the quote journalism <clears throat> world could be so so irresponsible to the yeah. country. They know the effect this this is having on the country, and, and yet they I can't watch Fox News. You know, you know how when you you know you go you go go to channels and everything. Right. I got to go real quick. I, I can't stand watching because I know they're lying to me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I can't watch for long. I try to make myself. You have to watch. But I'm standing up screaming at the television, then I finally turn no, it to you another have, channel. You have to watch. We have to watch all. Because we have to know. Oh yes, we do. So let's talk about <laughs> some other things that happened this week. Uh, you know, so, uh, we want to reduce the amount of Trump fatigue we have, or at least. Impeachment fatigue we have. Uh, I think one, one thing that struck me interesting was a guy named Silverman. <clears throat> he was a talk show host. He was actually um, making his living on a, on a, what do you call it, a, a, a conservative radio show in the Midwest. And, uh, and he decided he was going to hit on Trump in the middle of a show. He claimed he was an independent, and that's good. They let him on the show anyway. But he went, he went after Trump on one show, and the manager of the radio station walked in and fired him on the spot mid-show and played something, some filler. And uh, the guy, of course, report, reported that to other media. But, uh, you know, you can see the attack on the press. The guy goes, and he was respected as an independent, yeah. but he could not be independent. Um, and what happened is he got fired summarily this way. Yeah. And, and, it's and, not and, the first time. No. You know, the cartoonist from Canada. I'll go back to the uh, Bush administration with uh, the Dixie Chicks. How dare they say oh, something yeah. adverse to the President of the United States? They were, you know, they were persona non grata almost instantly. Right. So any criticism at all is going to be met with isolation. Yeah, I mean, so we, this is permeating our society. Um, the, the, the manager of that radio station didn't call the White House for instructions, but he was affected by what the White House does and says. And he felt, uh, you know, uh, emboldened so he could go and fire this guy on the spot risking a lawsuit, which I think he will probably have for mm -hmm. his effort. Yep. Um, the other one that's interesting, I'd like your comments on it, is this, I think I sent it to both of you, this extraordinary um, uh, pardon, par a set of pardons oh, oh, yeah. that Trump made to uh, people in the SEALs <clears throat> who right. have been convicted or are charged with um, war, war crimes. crimes. War yeah. crimes. Uh, and, you know, in the thought that the military charged them, um, and they were tried after evidence by their own platoon mates, um, and, and Trump decided he was going to intervene and pardon them on the spot. Uh, well, one of them well, got clemency. They didn't actually have the trial yet, yeah, right. which is really unheard of, they're saying, for someone to get right, that kind of clemency beforehand. before they even get the trial. So we don't even know well, any Well, it's evidence. unheard of for the president to get down to that level of detail to right. offer the pardons. Right. Somebody is talking in his ear. Yeah. yeah. Um, probably not from the military, from, you know, the right wing, the Stephen Miller crowd. Yep. Um, yeah, we can talk about that, too. And, well, and the military has come out very specifically and well, against it. Admiral and Green. Said, no. Admiral, Admiral Green, Green is, is a hero. Right. No. You saw yes, that. Yes, he yeah. is. Admiral Green is going to take away, and I don't know the sea, air, land, uh, special forces well enough to understand in the Navy what a trident means. Um, I, don't, I don't know what that means. But I understand it is a badge of honor. And when to you be have, in the seals. It's a well, seal. It's your it's, seal it's, badge. Oh, it's yeah. your seal badge, and it's a badge of honor, and that is going to be removed from them. And so Admiral Green right now is standing tall and in defiance of what Donald Trump's pardon has just recently They're done. They're probably also going to get the guy out, he of, will the, probably, out of the Navy administratively. Uh, yeah. You know, you, you can't have a war criminal, a convicted war criminal, convicted on the testimony of his own mates uh, still in the Navy. It's bad for morale. It's bad for image. It's Bad for the United it's States. It's bad for recruiting. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. You know, this is not a television show where you're somehow liberated to kill people. This is, this is the United States doing this officially with taxpayer money for, for hopefully good and proper geopolitical reasons. And, and uh, for Trump to intercede that way is, is completely responsible with all kinds of negative effects. Now, this guy, Green, the admiral, he's, his career is finished. It's done. He's done. But... I think he knows that. He's a huge that. hero. Yeah. And I think what we have, and this is probably a thread we ought to talk about, we have heroes emerging. Emerging in Congress as witnesses, emerging in the military, emerging all over town, emerging in the, uh, in the automobile uh, issue in California. 
right? Uh, we, have, we have attorneys general all over the country emerging to fight with him about this and to say he's wrong. Um, they may or may not prevail on their particular issue, but they are speaking up. Well, each pendulum, before it swings the other way, takes heroes like that to stand up, lose his career. Um, maybe his reputation in the neighborhood. Uh, let's face it, you all have to go home at the end of the day, and depending on where you live, you may be, you know, you may be isolated in that direction. Well, you know, uh, Vindman, to go back to him for a minute, um, is, is under protection now. I felt proud for the first time in a long time listening to him. I did. And Yovanovitch also. I just thought, you know, there's hope. It really gave me a little bit of hope because I've just been very distressed about all of this that's going on. So to see somebody be that brave and to be mm -hmm. that bold and to stand up and have courage like that, because that's what America and Americans really are. In, in my mind, anyway, that's what we are. And so to with, see somebody do that was really let's nice. talk, Yeah, heroes are emerging, and, and mm -hmm. I think uh, we feel the same way. If we can do anything, we should. Mm -hmm. um, two judges. Uh, the judge who, who faced down Roger uh, Stone, and he's mm -hmm. been convicted of lots of things that are going to get him uh, in jail for decades, the paper said. I was surprised that they didn't send him straight to jail. The fact that they let him go in between sentencing, I thought. That's a white collar. Yeah, it's a white collar, yeah, 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 get your things in order. Yeah. I don't know. I but they're going they to sock him with a long sentence, I think. I hope so. And if it's that judge who, you know, she indicated early on, she was not crazy about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there was another judge. You know the story? I think it was in Massachusetts who, who um, is being uh, prosecuted uh, for uh, uh, offending Trump on an immigration issue. She let, she let some immigrants uh, escape his, his rules in, about immigration. And, and for her trouble, the United States attorney went after her and indicted her. And she was really trying to protect the rule of law as she saw it. But the Department of Justice under William Barr does have the power to activate United States attorneys mm -hmm. around the country to prosecute people uh, they don't like. So this. They figured this was a sort of sanctuary judge who was going to go against the, the Trump movement, and they're, going to, they're, going to, they're prosecuting him. Yet in a second breath, we have uh, Steve Menachie. 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 Yeah, the judge that has no trial experience is basically taking over the Court of Appeals. Yeah. And his testimony before Congress was appalling. Even the Republicans were, uh, you know, dumbstruck as to his responses. Yeah, and the American Bar Association. Uh, advised against his confirmation, yeah. but, but uh, it was a week ago or so, but uh, the Senate confirmed him yeah. lickety-split, yeah. thank, thanks to um, uh, Moscow Mitch. Um, this is very tragic because he's young, relatively, and he'll be on the bench for a long time. Long time. 40 years is his age right off now. except for an impeachment. Right. Isn't he actually a known white nationalist? Yes, Isn't that's that, right. Thank you. I mean, he's, yeah, it's, he's not just like a regular inexperienced lawyer guy. He's actually, yeah, bad news. Menashe marks the 162nd Trump judicial nominee confirmed by the Senate. And that means 162 right-wing ideologues who are not qualified. Uh, he has now appointed a total of 112 district ju judges, um, 46 uh, circuit judges, and two Supreme Court justices. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg is getting old. So we have a situation where the, where the whole judiciary is being remade in his image now. That's scary beyond any election uh, in 2020. Well, this one is the most blatant I've ever seen. Yeah. Certainly blatant. No trial experience, and yet he's in the, the highest, one of the highest courts in the, in the country, is in the Court of Appeals. No trial experience. And he I've... hadn't even attended a trial. Hadn't participated in writing briefs or research for a trial. Never even took a deposition. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's a racist That's on top like, of that. Yeah. And he's I a mean, racist. This is like how to be the worst president imaginable. But I go back to our statement. At what point would something like this like normally occur and, and there'd be so much pushback, not only from the Democrats, but also from the Republicans? There'd be pushback. Not a whisper. Not a whisper. Okay, so, so. what's going to happen next week? 
Just to prepare ourselves. More, for more silence from the Republicans. More silence from Republicans. More That's not going to change. combative um, nonsense conspiracy theories that they're going to try to put forward and shove down the America's throat. Yeah. Um, and hopefully we can just pray that people will see through that. Yeah. Um, you know, and that somehow Stefanik and Nunes and Jordan and all those guys are just going to Radcliffe and all those guys are just going to kind of. I don't know. Well, they're a kind of conspiracy, we, we too, hope. aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think you're going to get more rants and raids from Donald Trump. No quid pro quo. I didn't. I wanted nothing. I wanted nothing. I did nothing. And to the point that maybe I'll have to check back into Walter Reed Hospital again. Yeah, we didn't talk about that part. No, nope. we're out of time. <laughs> we're out of time. Shoot. Well, we'll see what happens. It's you not, not going to go away. Yeah. That blood pressure is going to go too high. <laughs> but, you know, I think he's going to come up with a new defense kinds of things. He's going to attack the Democrats. Right. Uh, he's working 24 hours to do that. And the other thing is uh, we have a very unstable world right now. We have uh, riots in Hong Kong, which he hasn't helped at all. We have no deal going in China. We have no deal going in North Korea. Uh, we have the Iranians making bombs again. And and they're blowing off the Europeans who want to slow them down on that. Um, the world is really bubbling these days. And I predict next week he's going to do something for distraction. These days, because of the huge public mm -hmm. attention on the impeachment hearings, you got to do bigger distraction than yep. before. Yep. So my prediction is we have a big distraction. Yes, It'll be something geopolitical. Okay, well, let's look for it. Yeah, yeah let's agree. look for it. Cynthia, okay. so nice to see you. Nice to see Thanks you. Thanks for too, coming Jay. down. Thank you, Jay. Enjoy your comments and your thought. Keep on getting up early in the morning. I'm done. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you need a little nap this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> Aloha. 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 Thanks. <laughs>